tremendous success. It's been a tremendous success in Ghana, and uh, not and not only in Ghana, it's, the, the influence has been extended out across West Africa as well. Um, I've seen I've saw statistics of survival rates uh, last week, which are most impressive. Mm -hmm. So can I? I'm not sure who's speaking first. Is it Roberta or is it Aire? Roberta. Roberta. Right. I will uh, hand over to. Okay. Just one minute. Let me. I want to. Great. Thank you. I want to slide share. We can see it fine. Okay, I got it. Okay. Is it okay now? That's perfect. Yes. So before we start, uh, we wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much to all our supporters and some of you are here tonight because without, without our supporters, our work would not be possible. And obviously a special thank you to Gordon because he played an essential role over the years to help develop and, and grow um, for the whole organization. And obviously we cannot not mention our biggest supporters as well. Next slide, Aire, please. Here we're just mentioning the, the biggest donors over the past four years, uh, namely UBS, obviously our major donor, um, and then the UK government and FCDO, uh, thanks to the um, UK Match project. SNF, uh, AMCC and Bristol Myers Squibb are also among our biggest donors of the past four years. A brief outline of the presentation will give a brief introduction, a general introduction of uh, the issues and the vision and mission of our organization. A brief overview of where we work because we don't work only in Ghana and West Africa, but water cancer has more of a global focus. We will go through our strategy and share the successes with you with a focus on Ghana and, and West Africa. And we'll end the presentation talking about the impact of our work. Um, as some of you may already know, uh, globally 70% of cancer related deaths will occur in low and middle income countries with 24.1 million new cases occurring by 2030. And the source of information here is the International Agency for Research on Cancer. Now, the most common types of childhood cancers are leukemia, brain cancers, lymphomas, and solid tumors, such as neuroblastoma and Williams tumors. And in low and middle income countries, the situation is worsened by high incidence of misdiagnosis. And some of the major uh, problems that low and middle income countries face is that uh, patients are often forced to abandon treatment due to its high cost. And there is also a lack of specialized training uh, for health professionals. And also there is a lack of awareness and education around childhood cancer among the community and among families. Regrettably, as most of us know, childhood cancer cannot generally be prevented or identified through screening. However, it can be cured uh, if the right resources are in place. Now, the vision, the vision of World Child Cancer is a world where every child with cancer has equal access to the best treatment and care, no matter where the child is born and no matter where they come from. And our mission is to improve diagnosis, treatment, and support for children with cancer and their families in low and middle income countries. Here you can see a map. You can have a quick overview of where um, our biggest country programs are. So you can see Ghana and Sierra Leone in West Africa. But 
Wocha Cancer also works in the wider sub-Saharan uh, region with a focus on Cameroon, Malawi, and there's also some uh, program influences in Kenya. There's some offices in, in some countries in Asia. You see Nepal, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Myanmar, Indonesia, and the Philippines. There is some focus in Kosovo. Uh, more recently, uh, we also started a project in Mexico. Next slide, please. Thank you. Now, the strategy of Ocha Cancer is to maximize the number of children who survive through four main pillars. The first pillar focuses on early diagnosis. And this, there are various aspects around diagnosis, but usually it would start uh, within the family and the community. So usually it would be a parent or a caregiver or a guardian or someone within the community that can see some symptoms um, and recognize that something is not right with the child and they understand that they need, they require immediate uh, medical attention. And then diagnosis also then passes on to the health professionals at the hospital that needs to have the right knowledge and skills and resources to be able to um, diagnose childhood cancer. And then the second pillar focuses on improving treatment. Uh, again, there are various aspects around treatment, but uh, mostly we talk about human resources uh, and having the right health professionals with the right skills and the right training that are able to offer the best treatment and care uh, to the child. And obviously other resources, uh, including drugs, so chemotherapy and medical equipment as well to be able to uh, offer the best treatment, including surgery and radiation therapy, for example. The third pillar it focuses on family support because um, childhood cancer, the journey of childhood cancer starts and ends uh, with the family. As I already mentioned, usually it, it would be the family to first recognize some uh, symptoms in the child. And then there is a major burden on the family because it will be up to them uh, to ensure that the child uh, remains in treatment and it is up to the family to provide the biggest emotional, but also uh, financial support uh, for the child to be able to stay in treatment. And at the end of it, hopefully, if the treatment is successful, it's obviously up to the family to then ensure that the child can reintegrate uh, into society. And then the final pillar focuses on advocacy, because obviously what your cancer cannot uh, do the job on their own and it recognizes the importance um, of big stakeholders uh, involved and the importance for um, stakeholders, including health authorities and administrations of hospital um, to be able to give the right, the appropriate attention to uh, childhood cancer. And I will now let my colleague Aire continue on the presentation. Uh, because he'd be best placed than me to talk about Ghana and, and West Africa. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Roberta, for starting off. Uh, as Roberta said, I'm picking each of the strategic pillars uh, to explain some of the things that uh, we do. Uh, first and foremost, uh, focusing on early diagnosis, uh, this strategy uh, we have embarked on massive training programs uh, in different areas uh, to improve on early diagnosis. And so far we have trained over 2000 health workers across 16 regions in Ghana and Sub-Saharan Africa in order to improve on early uh, diagnosis. And one of the trainings is early warning signs and symptoms of childhood cancer uh, so that they will be able to identify these children early in order to improve on uh, uh, prognosis so that uh, they can easily uh, get cured or managed uh, if they are not uh, identified early. But at least they would have been given some treatment to reduce the pain and suffering of the children. So this 
has uh, been very, very successful uh, by World Child Cancer across board. And uh, most organizations are using the materials that have been developed so far uh, to train uh, their uh, focus countries. And uh, uh, sorry. So we, we've also embarked on awareness creation to help us improve uh, on awareness of families and community members uh, to identify uh, their children with signs and symptoms uh, that are likely to be childhood cancer so that they can go to the nearest health facility for further assessment and diagnosis. And the awareness also includes uh, on social media, uh, television and radio. And uh, we have also trained health workers in the communities uh, to go out with uh, flyers and flip charts, posters that we have developed. Uh, just as you can see uh, in the slide, uh, one of the uh, community programs where community members were brought together. And these are organized groups uh, to orient them on the signs and symptoms of childhood cancer. It also includes uh, utilizing existing uh, programs like antenatal, child welfare clinics, and OPDs, where these health workers use the materials developed to educate uh, We're not hearing you, Ayere. Members on, yes, sorry. Uh, hope you can hear me. We are now, you you went, you went silent for about 10 seconds. Okay, sorry about that. There was an incoming call, I'm using my phone. Uh, sorry about that. One of the programs also included uh, early warning signs and symptoms of retinoblastoma, uh, which, has been implemented in collaboration with Ghana Health Service in focus regions in Ghana. And the slide you are seeing is a meeting with the Director General of Ghana Health Service, one of our program managers, uh, a pediatric ophthalmologist, and the coordinator for the eye unit of the Ghana Health Service. And this was an inception meeting that was organized to orient and update the Director General of the program uh, to get his support and the support of his team uh, for the implementation of the program in uh, three focus regions. And this is in support. The support we are getting for this program is from AMCC, which Roberta mentioned earlier. And the program has been going on very well. And additionally, we supported the country to develop a retinoblastoma strategy, uh, as well as supporting Cameroon to also develop their national retinoblastoma strategy for implementation. And we are also focusing on improving treatment. And uh, this, there are a lot of interventions that have been implemented on this. One of them is the establishment of a center of excellence uh, in Ghana, and uh, that is the Kolebutichin Hospital, as a training hub for training of uh, health professionals uh, to improve on treatment and an additional center of excellence at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital. So currently in Kolebu, uh, we have in collaboration with the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons developed a curriculum for locally training pediatric oncologists to augment the number of uh, qualified professionals for the management of childhood cancers. So far, we have about 18 doctors who have benefited from the UBS uh, funded scholarship uh, for doctors. And we, we also have a, 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 an MOU with the Ghana College of Pharmacists for the training of pediatric oncology pharmacists. So far we have three in training and they are currently at uh, Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai for an external rotation uh, towards uh, preparing to graduate somewhere next year. 
And we also have an MOU with the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives for the training of pediatric oncology nurses. So far, we have trained uh, 29 nurses uh, out of 30 uh, who, are, who have been posted to various hospitals where they are providing uh, services for childhood cancer. And we are moving towards uh, uh, supporting uh, the training of nurse specialists in the area to, so that we can have a highly motivated and competent uh, nursing team to support uh, the multidisciplinary team in the management of childhood cancers in the sub-region. And this is not only for Ghana, but for the whole of the sub-region because they are training, uh, the training in Ghana is usually accepted uh, in most countries in Africa. And we have also uh, been training other healthcare professionals including pathologists, hematologists, to improve on their skills and management of uh, childhood cancers in general, as well as uh, biomedical scientists, not only the pathologists and hematologists, and as well as improving uh, the availability of uh, equipment, uh, such as uh, patient monitors, vein finders, bears, and so on, and improving the infrastructure. Uh, we have uh, provided uh, support for a renovation of the center of Kolebu, Konfanoche, and several others. We've also provided support uh, for uh, safety cabinets for the reconstitution of cytotoxics uh, so that they will be able to uh, reconstitute these medicines in a safe environment that is safe for the staff, the patient, and other caregivers around the facility. So a lot is going on as far as the center of excellence is concerned. Additionally, uh, we have training partners in Edinburgh and other uh, uh, well-endowed hospitals. Their professionals usually come over, and if they cannot, they organize virtual programs to exchange skills and knowledge in the management of childhood cancers. And this has been very, very helpful in achieving the outcomes that we have uh, so far. And uh, this, this is a part of the uh, grad ones. Uh, we have the nurse leader from Confanoche and that of CAF. Uh, myself, I was a fellow supporting the training of the nurses. Uh, so I joined them in their graduation ceremony. So we have, just as I mentioned, the scholarship for the doctors, nurses, pharmacies, and others, and then fellowship for 14 doctors so far. Uh, and then uh, the nurses, 29 have graduated so far, and the pharmacies, as I said, are currently in Tata Memorial. And we've also extended the capacity building uh, to the Sub-Saharan African Nursing Network in collaboration with SIOP. We developed a curriculum for foundation course for uh, nurses in pediatric oncology. So, uh, so far, several countries have benefited from this foundation course uh, in pediatric oncology nursing, including Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, Tanzania, Malawi, Rwanda, Uganda, Zimbabwe, and Ethiopia. And we also periodically provide support uh, to nurses in most of these countries at Red Cross. We have an MOU with them uh, for the training of nurses in Africa. Several countries so far have benefited from Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and and many more have all benefited and have testified that the skills and experience they gained at the Red Cross Hospital in Cape Town has been very, very useful uh, for them. And uh, these are some uh, awards to some of the nurses whose capacity have been built 
so far. And uh, Enyo Busumpra is a nurse leader at, uh, at the Kolobu Teaching Hospital, and she won the Lifetime Achievement Award as tie up at the uh, 2022 uh, Congress. We have also not ended our support at these areas, but supported data management for childhood cancer. We developed a tool through Kobo Collect for most of the hospitals and Ghana, most of the facilities in Ghana have used it. And with support from PEG, they've been able to analyze the data uh, for them to inform care and management of childhood cancer. And this has been very, very helpful. And in Sierra Leone, uh, if for the first time, they were able to collect data on childhood cancer and analyze it. And they were very, very appreciative of the support from uh, World Child Cancer. And all this has been made possible through our support, uh, the support we get from UBS. And then uh, we have to appreciate, as uh, Roberta said, the support uh, from Gordon. And uh, PEC also supports most of our program countries in conducting research, uh, and which has been very useful globally. We have been able to conduct a research on cost effectiveness. And this has been very useful uh, for all scientists on childhood cancer generally. And the research continues in order to help us improve on evidence-based management of childhood cancers especially in low resource settings uh, as we work in. And we have supported several of the staff, doctors, pharmacists, and so on to attend SIOP where they can network, learn more from others, and then improve on the care of childhood cancers in the program countries. And the family support is very, very essential in low resource settings. Uh, uh, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. So, and the support we get, we use it to help in providing welcome packs and information packs to families, uh, cost of diagnostics, treatment, and transportation. Most of the families, you'll be surprised, that are affected by childhood cancer are peasant farmers who cannot even afford three square meals. So transportation cost uh, has been very, very helpful uh, for them in getting to the nearest uh, treatment centers. And uh, we also provide support for homes, uh, psychosocial support, uh, training for health workers to be able to provide psychosocial support, as well as uh, engaging child life specialists to help families and children undergo treatment and this has been very very helpful from the feedback that we get from these beneficiaries it has been very very useful and we appreciate it this is one of our our child life specialists uh, i would like to play it if you don't mind uh, i need to reshare with sound uh, so that uh, you'll be able to uh, the sound clearly. Uh, you've put, you've lost you. your screen. Oh, there's back again. This is Mary. She has acute lymphoblastic leukemia. In the past, I would not have been very optimistic about her chances of recovery. And now, things are different. I work here at the Center of Excellence for Diagnosis and Treatment of Child Cancer in Ghana's Kolebu Teaching Hospital. I'm full of hope for her complete recovery. My name is Augusta Esie Dulati. 
I am the first child life specialist in Ghana. My job is to look after the mental and physical well-being of a child and their caregiver during a child's treatment. Our centre draws on expertise, skills and resources from all over West Africa as a point of focus and excellence in child cancer. Today, I'm meeting with Dr. Lily Tego to ask her about Mary's forthcoming cancer treatment. As a medical professional, having someone of Dr. Tego's experience and expertise to draw on is a major benefit of our center. It not only means that our children are in good hands, but that we are seen as a beacon of excellence in the region, attracting high caliber professionals to share knowledge and skills on cutting edge cancer care and treatment. Involving families and caregivers in a child's treatment is essential. If a child has cancer, it has a massive impact on their family financially, socially, and emotionally. So I'm here to support caregivers and help them cope. I'm checking in with our resident clinical psychologist because I think marriage caregiver would benefit for some extra support and counseling to cope with the pressures she's under. She also offers free group support sessions for us in the nursing team. So we also get the psychological support and counseling we need in this emotionally challenging environment. I'm so proud to work here. I don't just feel part of the medical team here in Ghana. I feel connected to the whole region's efforts to improve the treatment of childhood cancer. Recently, I attended a training on improving palliative care with Kenyans, Sierra Leoneans, and Ghanaians that I'm sharing with the nurse team here. This wouldn't be possible if we couldn't mobilize the best teachers, trainers, doctors, and clinicians in sub-Saharan Africa to share their expertise and bring it into our center. Today, I need some information from our data management about upcoming inpatients so I can plan my treatment times. We've improved our childhood cancer database so that now we can track in and out patients and ensure that when they leave, we don't let children like Mary slip through the net of continuing care. I know that Mary is receiving the best treatment she can get, that her family is supporting her, and that the team surrounding her is full of excellence. So I hope uh, you enjoyed that story. Uh, so the, on the family support, we have also developed a digital tool to support children understand treatment across uh, all our program countries in, in Africa. And uh, this has also made uh, children cope with treatment and they love doing it. And you can see in the slide, the child life specialist uh, teaching the child how to use uh, the tool to understand the various forms of treatment and then play alongside. So this has been very useful in our program countries. Uh, and uh, we have shared this approach and people are benefiting from it. Our fourth strategic pillar is on advocacy and Roberta has touched on it. We are working alongside with WHO. Uh, we are a key partner of WHO now and an official partner with WHO. And we have been involved in a number of programs uh, with WHO, Afro and global level in the development of childhood cancer 
uh, materials. And uh, we are also working alongside with the global initiative to ensure that uh, we achieve the WHO targets of uh, at least 60% survival rate and beyond and saving an additional uh, 1 million lives. So I have talked about the strategies that we have developed on childhood cancer. Uh, we have supported that in Ghana and other countries. Uh, we have supported uh, Cameroon as well in conducting uh, country assessments. Uh, we have uh, developed policy briefs and we continue to do that. We have been engaging the Ministry of Health in the various program countries, including Ghana. And then we've been celebrating uh, the International Childhood Cancer uh, uh, Day and then the Child Cancer Awareness Month in all our program countries. And we usually do this bringing all the key players together. We are actually the main rallying point for activities around childhood cancer. And uh, we are happy about this and we appreciate everyone who has made an impact in helping World Child Cancer to gain this feat. Globally, uh, we are uh, a household name when we are talking about childhood cancer as far as uh, uh, implementing the program through the health system is concerned. A, ho a whole program that helps us to achieve our targets. So you can see the impact that we have made so far. It's very impressive, even though uh, we haven't reached where we want to reach. Survival rates continue to increase uh, incrementally, uh, as you can see in the graph, and number of children newly diagnosed also continue to increase. And this is a very good trend that we are proud of uh, together with all our partners. Uh, and we hope that we'll be able to reach our global goal of reaching additional 20,000 children across the world and to make sure that children with childhood cancer uh, do not, childhood cancer does not become a death sentence to most families in low resource settings in Africa and, and Asia. And we hope that uh, uh, we'll continue to receive the support that we have received so far so that we can reach our goal at the end of the day. Uh, we thank you so much for your listenership. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Ayuri. Roberta, are you, are you coming back on or? No, thank you, Gordon. We can leave this space to you or for any questions. Well, I, I will take the screen. We'll take the sh screen sharing down and we can view everyone's who's been watching. There we go. Um, I'll be with you in a second once I get this to work. Um, you, there we go. Well, thank you very much indeed. It's um, it's a spectacular success. Just a few things that some of you may not have picked up. The 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 acronym SIOP has been mentioned a number of times in that presentation, and SIOP is a international conference that takes place once a year, uh, which focuses totally on childhood cancer and uh, has a section that focuses on childhood cancer in the developing world as well. Um, and we and World Child Cancer works very close with them. Uh, UBS, uh, are probably the largest um, uh, investment bank in the world, um, has been giving us incredible support over the last probably five years, Roberta, I would think. Um, and it's many millions of pounds that, or dollars that they have donated. And it's the money comes from a, an oncology fund that they set up in the USA. So that's that's been so much so helpful. Uh, can I start off with one question? Um, you've, you've told us the, the stats that you've just shared with us. 71% survival of all cancers in Ghana. That, that is staggering, uh, well above any target I've heard previously. What impact are you having across the rest of West Africa? 
so uh, what we have done is to make sure that we have a center of excellence. So we have that at the Kolebut Teaching Hospital as a training hub for the rest of uh, Africa, actually. Uh, usually we say Africa, but most of the beneficiaries, I mean, the hospitals, uh, the capacity building for doctors, pharmacies goes beyond West Africa. So, and most of the doctors, uh, the pediatric oncology, oncologists in Ghana have been providing technical support to uh, Sierra Leone, for instance. So they are directly tapping in the experience, the knowledge, and everything that uh, has been built in Ghana. So there is an impact, there is a ripple effect in the rest of Africa. Now, uh, so far, we have two Nigerians in training at this center of excellence. So we, we hope that even uh, you are aware of the population in Nigeria, this is going to have a huge impact in, 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 in Nigeria and the uh, sub-region as, as a whole. So there's a ripple effect and we have a Cameroonian in training. So all this is adding up and is having a bigger and a huge impact, impact in Sub-Saharan Africa uh, as a whole. Okay, right, open to questions from anyone. Pam. Um, you need to unmute, you, you unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, is there any national or government support for your work, or is it all done by fundraising? Maybe Robert. Yeah, everything is done through fundraising, but uh, I must say what we have achieved, which I didn't mention, is that out of our advocacy work, uh, which have taken place uh, for about five to four years now has resulted in the government uh, uh, including four childhood cancers that contributes over 60 percent of the burden on the national health insurance scheme uh, this was announced two years ago but there are still administrative processes that are ongoing to ensure that uh, children with childhood cancer are, are able to benefit from this health insurance uh, package but it hasn't taken off actively yet. But all the work that we have done over the years uh, have all come from uh, donations, uh, just as we have mentioned. Thank you. The, periodically, there are some churches that donate funds because of the huge awareness. And then there are other, there's a group of Indian women who also periodically provide some foodstuffs to the hospitals. But uh, comparing that with what we have provided, we have been providing, I think the, it's not uh, enough, though there have been some support uh, from these other national sources. Um, just as a measure, the cost of treating a child in Africa with cancer is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Roberta, about $1,000? Would that be correct? Yes, I think that's an average. Obviously, treatment is different depending on, on the type of cancer. So, and it, it can have also different lengths. It can go from one month to two months to, to more. And also it depends on the type of drugs that are used uh, because it can be generic and non-generic drugs. But on average, as you say, for example, for retinoblastoma, remember we had a case uh, last month uh, in May, and yes, the cost of treatment was uh, $1,000 for the full treatment of retinoblastoma, uh, the cancer of the eye. Yeah, that's significantly less than it is in this country. That's really interesting, and I'm pleased to hear it. I think it's 150,000 euro is the average cost across Europe. Mm. And in America, it's five hundred thousand dollars is the average cost of treating a child, and they are achieving a, a over eighty percent survival, and they're treating cancers that are extremely expensive to treat. But um, the impact that world child cancer has with a minimal budget is tremendous, 
the UK government do contribute quite a lot to this project as well, Pam. Right. And we do, and Ghana itself uh, funds the hospital we're working in, all the support teams that, that are there. Splendid. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Hey, Colin. Yeah. Are, are there any other international charities focusing on, on um, child cancer in developing countries, or are you ploughing this furrow on your own? Well, I'm going to answer that, Colin, because I know the answer. World Child Cancer is the only global uh, charity that helps children with cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, in various countries, there are charities that do a small amount of work. Um, I think East Africa, the, the French are quite involved, I think, if I'm right. Um, and in other countries in Asia, you'll find some charities get involved. But World Child Cancer is the only global uh, charity doing this. And they're working closely now with the World Health Organization uh, in, to achieve a 60% survival across the world on childhood cancer. I'm delighted you're nodding, Ayeri. <laughs> no. Thank you. Any other questions? I think uh, Jim had his hand up. Jim. Hi, Gordon. Hello, Ayeri and Roberta. Thank you very much for your um, for your interesting presentation. I was just wondering, you mentioned about all the useful data that you're collecting and, and how that's been helpful. And I was wondering if you're getting the benefit of any international um, data that's also being collected and how you're sharing that and how that the international research that's going into cancer is being applied over in Ghana and West Africa. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, what we are doing, we, we realize that uh, data has been a problem in uh, developing countries, especially childhood cancer. Uh, for that matter. So we decided to develop this tool uh, to support the hospitals collect, but the data actually, uh, technically, does not belong to us. We only collect it to analyze it, to, to improve uh, care as operational data, uh, but not for research. Uh, so we are not able to share it but uh, uh, last month I was at ASCO and uh, met several organizations and, and ASCO in itself uh, with their opportunities for clinical uh, trials and others. So they are happy to support countries uh, with opportunities for clinical trials and other research opportunity. So what we intend doing is make these opportunities available to management of the hospitals and governments to see what uh, they can do to take advantage of the available uh, research opportunities, which can help reduce the burden of cost, actually. So that is a plan uh, that we have. Thank you. Like Roberta, maybe you could explain the twinning arrangement that happens across the world with World Child Cancer and some of the top child oncology um, hospitals. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, World Child Cancer has actually this was since the beginning. Uh, they partner with some UK hospitals. Uh, so for Ghana, the the twinning partners, the twinning partners is called is with the uh, Edinburgh Hospital. Uh, so there are uh, a team of health professionals, doctors, pediatric oncologists, uh, nurses, and more um, that uh, has delivered over the past years um, training face to face, meaning there was. There, were, there was one or two uh, health professionals traveling to Ghana to deliver training in the hospitals to share their knowledge on uh, different type of uh, topics on childhood cancer, in, in general management of childhood cancer. And as Aida mentioned before, um, also a lot of virtual 
uh, sessions over the years, especially during the pandemic, this has increased. Uh, so it is really platforms where they, they share their knowledge and then they also offer some uh, interactive sessions where everybody can, can, can chip in as, as well and they can share um, their knowledge. And the, the hospitals that you're working with, Roberta, do you know the names of the hospitals around the world that you're working with? I know the one for Ghana, which I mentioned is Edinburgh, for Sierra Leone. For um, Children's Hospital, uh, Pam. Yes. For Sierra Leone, Aire, that's Wales. Yes. Yes. What about for Cameroon? Addison, Wales, yeah. Uh, Cameroon, uh, I don't remember, but I can check if uh, you need that. But you're working with St. Jude in Memphis, America. You're working with uh, Dana Farber in Boston, not necessarily in Africa, but in, we're working with hospitals in Singapore, we're working with hospitals, I think Ghana, but Ghana is twinned, they're not Ghana, Cameroon is twinned with... Uh, South African hospital area. I can't remember what it's what it's called, but um, so there's there's tremendous centers of excellence around the world, all supporting the work we're doing. Yes, and as Maida mentioned, and also in India, the Tata Memorial Hospital, that's where um, pediatric oncologists from from Ghana go and do an observation for six months. So they go there and they have practical experience at the hospital. Um, and not only pediatric oncologists now, from this year also pharmacists started going and having a three month uh, rotation there. So yeah. So basically Jim, you're talking about sharing data. The data, these hospitals have gathered techniques or data on how to treat children. So if they get, they then, then are able to share that with the hospitals in Ghana, whatever, and make sure that the treatment is correct. Like treating, the treatment is relatively, I don't underestimate how difficult it is, but it's relatively straightforward. But if you give the child too much chemotherapy, you probably kill the child. If you don't give them enough, uh, it has no impact. If I got that right, Roberta. Yes, I'm not a technical expert myself, but I would say so, Gordon. Yeah. Um, and as you rightly say, when they go, they receive uh, these practical sessions and they can hear expertise, um, they learn a lot. And especially, I know, for example, at Tata Memorial in India, uh, they have a high flux, they have a high number of cases that they see every day. So they can see a lot of uh, variation of cases, um, so much more than, for example, in Ghana. So in a short period of time, they're able to see a lot more cases during the observation. So they learned a lot more in this short period of time uh, while they are there. And they're able to then bring back that knowledge that they gain and to share it also with the other health professionals. And about the sharing, this is also a principle that wheelchair cancer applies because um, the basic principle of the training is that usually um, a number of selected trainers are trained. So then those trainers are then be able to go back to their home institutions and they can also cascade, uh, let's say cascade the knowledge that they gain and train the other professionals. So then this is quite an efficient way of um, cost-effective way as well uh, to then spread the knowledge. And so it doesn't get lost. It is a continuous uh, knowledge sharing over the years, also with the new professionals that will join in the upcoming years. Okay, one last question. Um, oh. right. Carry on, Colin. Yeah. I, I was just wondering, I mean, a little history about how World Child Cancer actually came about? Well, yes, I can tell you, because I was there at the beginning, Colin. I thought you might uh, have been, yeah. <laughs> uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, um, Jeff Thaxter, um, he, he, he lost a child, a 10-year-old child to cancer, and he vowed that 
in order to uh, help others around the world, he would set up an international organization to um, treat treat children and, sh and share the, the knowledge. Um, he, I was working with him at uh, Click Sergeant at the time, and he persuaded me to go with him to Bangladesh and uh, just see what happened. And we, we flew to Bangladesh. Like we had to delay our trip because of um, civil war that was going on in Bangladesh. But we got there eventually. We spent four days in Bangladesh. We visited nine hospitals, saw so many ill children uh, and uh, met senior politicians. And um, I was persuaded to get involved at that stage. So Jeff and I set about um, establishing World Child Cancer uh, based in the UK. Unfortunately, uh, Jeff himself had a brain tumour and collapsed at a conference and died some three or four months later past that. So uh, I picked up the um, the challenge and I just I, I went out and travelled around the world and met most of the trustees and got it got it established. And uh, Jeff's daughter is now the finance director at World Child Cancer, so is able to to watch what's going on. So and and it's started in two thousand eight. So it's fifteen years old, roughly. Say, I can't add up. Seventeen years old. So and it's gone from nine thousand children were treated last year, I think. I'm looking at Roberta for confirmation of that, but I think that's right. Um, so that that's where we are, Colin. Well, congratulations. Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. No, it's just it's. I've not been chairman for many years, but we we keep in regular contact with each other. Mm -hmm. Well done. Okay, well, thanks very much, Roberta. So thanks very much, Yeri. It's um, tremendous that you're able to join us tonight, and congratulations for all the the work that you're doing out in Ghana and and Africa. So thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. A nice meeting you all. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye.